So today I'm going to be going over different types of order processes. Um, like I had mentioned in the chat, the most popular question I get is uh, how do I set a limit cell and a stop loss at the same time? Um, of course, every broker tends to word it just a little bit differently. Um, so I'm going to demonstrate it in Thinkorswim. Um, maybe it'll persuade you to start using it. Maybe you'll learn something new. Um, and so on and so forth. So without further ado, um, of course there's several ways you can purchase and sell in Thinkorswim, um, but I personally like the Active Trader, so that's where most of this video is going to take place. Active Trader you can find on this right hand tab, um, and all of these tabs apply to any chart you have open. Uh, you, of course you can do big buttons is another way you can trade. Again, I prefer Active Trader. Active Trader shows a ladder of prices, which also great is if you have a position, it will show you your P&L based on the price. So as you scroll up, you can see your profit getting bigger, or when setting your stop loss or exit, you can see your loss. Now, let's just say um, I'll give two scenarios. Um, one, you own a stock, uh, like for instance, I have Tesla, you own it and you want to set a limit sell and a stop loss. You've already purchased it, you purchased it a few days ago, and now you just want to let it ride. Um, you don't have to watch it every second or you can't watch it every second. So you want to set a limit sell and a stop loss at the same time. So let's go over that first. First and foremost, um, when you click on your Active Trader tab, make sure you go to the gear icon up top and make sure that in your current set, which are your buttons that are currently showing, you have order template editor in there. That's what I'm gonna be going over. Uh, it may be in there as default, I'm not really sure. Um, I'm actually on a computer I don't normally trade from and it was on there, so maybe it is by default, but that, if you don't see this template button here, just make sure to bring it over. These are all your options that you can have over there. Um, I think, you know, you'll narrow it down to how you prefer to trade, but these are buttons that I deemed unuseful for how I trade. So I keep it, this This is my set. So we're all set, we got order template editor in there, and we're ready to rock. So again, this is just for scenario when you own the stock and you wanna do a limit sell and a stop loss. So for that situation, what I do is a OCO order, which is one cancels the other. So once you click by default, it'll be on single, and that's how you, you know, buy market, buy bid, ask. But we're going to go to OCO, one cancels the other. So right now, I just bought some shares just, just, just to uh, demonstrate this specifically. So we're in at 712.66, um, and we want to set the sell and stop loss. So when, when you click OCO, this box will pop up. You have your link your offset and your order. I'll go link kind of as we go. It'll be a little bit too confusing if I start with that. So just worry, this is your stop loss. When you click OCO, what's gonna pop up is your stop loss par parameters. And you can set that in three ways. Tick offset, percent offset, and value offset. There she is. I usually like to do in an OCO order um, value. And again, this will come with time, you'll find your own way, but I like to do value. And what it's basing the stop off of is this link. So do we wanna base the stop off of its ask and bid price, its last price, mark price, or average price? Since we own it already, I'm gonna do average price. And I wanna get out just below 700, so, um, my average price is 712, so my stop loss I would do like 698 or something. So let's just do uh, $14. So that's $14 on value. Uh, of course, you can do a percent, but I'm just doing 14. That's my stop. Once we have that set, I just clicked enter. You won't see any change or anything. Now we'll go to the ladder to set the limit sell portion. We have the stop loss figured in. So let's just find a good now this is when you would just find a good price. And what's also cool about the, the uh, Active Trader is it'll actually show you symbols 
where your indicators are. So for instance, here at 713.51, um, there's an SMA line. At 713.92, that's where the uh, EMA line is. So you can kind of just look at this and get a general idea where there might be support and resistance, especially with like a deviation channel, which should be, um, that's all the way up there. So let's just call it 714.85, just picking that out of the blue. Once I click that, I do shift click because if you just click it normally, another box will pop up to confirm. Not a big deal. Um, so once I click that, as you can see on the chart, it's showing my, my limit cell and my stop. My stop is at 698, just like we had discussed, and 714.85. And there you go. Uh, like I said, I've already owned it, so this was just a way I can just put it in and leave, you know, go about my day, go back to work, and, and sort of turn on automated trading. Of course, I like to set my stop and limit cells to just whatever one comes first which is exactly what an OCO order is. One cancels the other. If it hits the stop, well then the limit's gonna cancel because we've been stopped out. So just make sure you set your stop losses and limits. Just, you're, you're comfortable with both. Don't, don't put your stop losses so low that if it does indeed hit, you're gonna be losing sleep over it. That's just a bad practice. So just make both a comfortable range. Don't, don't shoot for the fences. It's always about base hits, especially starting out. Um, and same goes with your stop loss. Another cool feature, since we have like a, a defined range between the two, um, of course we can just, um, there's a way you can just move them both simultaneously and that's by grabbing this little chain icon here and just dragging it up and you can kind of move and if you're able to watch with, with the market you can kind of move it up as you go, which is another cool way. Or um, another useful feature that I have found where are they? Where's the actual price here um, essentially just moving the stop up as the price goes so it, especially if it's in a day trade um, you can be looking at your ladder here and, and just as the price keeps creeping up just keep moving that stop loss up, keep moving that stop loss up. And then if it does jump back down, well then you're protected and you'll be stopped out at profits. And that's just a quick and convenient way to keep keep moving it up. It's, it's really, really simple um, and, and efficient. It works best, uh, especially because you can slide it in real time, which is really cool. Um, another thing, oh, I went over the chain link, move them up as a group. Uh, the only other order I was gonna go over was a bracket order. Now I'll use this scenario as if you don't own the company. You don't own any shares. Let's see, do I own any? Just 10. Let's just pretend I don't own any in MVIS here. And I want to make an order that has a limit sell, a buy order, and a stop loss. So all three orders in one, um, set it and forget it type of thing. In that scenario, we're going to go down to trigger with bracket. So with bracket orders, two boxes will pop up, your limit cell and your stop. So as opposed to the OCO order, it was just the stop loss, and then we picked um, our uh, price in the ladder itself. Now for this one, you're going to do the limit cell and the stop loss and the buy, but I'll get to that that's the third step. So first we want to go over the, the limit sell. Where do we want to sell this stock? We haven't bought it yet, so we're just we're just getting an idea for it. Um, again, I'll go to the value. Um, that's just how I like to do it. Sometimes for the stop loss, I like to use percentage, and I just, um, generally I like to use 6% for a day trade. Um, swing sometimes all the way up to 12. But for a day trade, I usually risk about 6 to 8%. But for now, I'll stick to value. Um, it's at 1250, so I want to get out in four bucks. So 1650, I, I plan to take profits. Click enter. Then we're going to go down to the stop loss. Where do I want to get out? Well, if I got in right now at 1252, I'd give it, you know, 12 even would be a pretty good 
uh, level of support. Round numbers always are. So let's drop it down to 60 cents. So we'll be right below 12. And that could be a good level of support there. So then now that we got those two in place, um, now we're going to buy it. And now, so on the right hand side is your sell side depicted in red, left is buy side depicted in green. We got our limit sell in place, we got our stop loss in place. Now we just need to buy the darn thing. And you can do it anyway. You can hit buy market, you can hit join the bid, buy the ask, whatever you want to do. Or you can use the latter. Doesn't really matter because your, your bracket order is still in place. So. I still like to use the ladder, um, and as you can see, as I'm moving up the ladder, the cursor on my chart is going with it. So you can kind of, you know, bottom of a candle, if that should be support. But let me just throw it up there so you can at least get a visualization. I'm going to do it low so it doesn't fill right away. So I put the order in at 1240. So I want to buy and visit 1240, and just by doing that, we put in my stop loss, just like we said, 60 cents lower, and then my uh, profit taking at plus four dollars. So, right in the uh, mid 16s range, just like we talked about. So, and that's another perfect way, another good uh, example of a different type of order you can make and, and do all three in one fell swoop. Um, again, this is pretty, pretty easy. I mean, it um, doesn't get much more easier than doing all three at once. Again, you can use the chain to kind of move them all around. And, and with this, with a, uh, a bracket order, if you keep it, so just like before, we had link on OCO. We were doing average price. You can do average bid, whatever. If you keep it on TRG like it is, so when I set it for a dollar, I want to take profits at a dollar, and I want to sell, and I want to be stopped out and say 60 cents. Well, if I keep it like that, that's the range it will always be in for, it, it's just it's the best way I can describe it. Um, it's always going to keep those numbers in mind. So like if I keep scrolling down, I'm never going to be able to see the stop because it's figuring 60 cents below that, below this buy limit. So if I do it at 1170, it's going to set it at 1110. If I do it at 1150, it's going to set it at 1090, so on and so forth. So just keep that in mind if you do keep it on the TRG, or of course you can do ask and bid, just something to play around with. Um, but again, I, I think that uh, you'll find that it's one of the most sophisticated systems. And, and once you start to learn it, it really is, um, it's not too bad. And you, you get used to it just like anything else. Um, but that's all I have right now. Uh, just wanted to make a quick video. Again, uh, hopefully this answers a lot of questions um, and maybe persuade some more uh, Thinkorswim users. Good luck. Let me know if you have any questions.